Story 1 I stepped out of the hotel room shower, once again struck by the luxury of the presidential suite. I'm not one to indulge my desires, but my recent good fortune, in the form of a huge annual bonus, had made up for the long hours I'd been working, which meant a weekend in the most expensive hotel room in town was necessary to revitalize my marriage. I headed for the bathroom door, wrapping a towel around my waist, when there was a knock on the hotel room door. I opened the bathroom door ajar, knowing that my sexy wife loved to tease the room service staff. I wasn't disappointed as I watched Savannah loosen the waistband of her hotel robe until almost her entire lush naked body was exposed before opening the door. To our mutual surprise, however, it was a pretty little blonde who pushed the cart with our dinner into the room. Come in, my wife muttered, stepping aside and lightly tucking her robe in. The young lady was taking the lids off the plates when she turned to my wife. Oh, hello, she exclaimed excitedly. Welcome back, Mrs. Wayne. Like Batman. She finished with a smile, clearly proud to have greeted a VIP guest by name. My wife's eyes widened slightly at being recognized as she quickly glanced towards the bathroom where I remained out of her sight. Remembering that my wife's boss always introduced himself when introducing himself. Bruce Wayne, you know, like Batman, probably a thousand times in the last few years, suddenly gave me a hole in my stomach. I finished toweling myself dry and dressed in my hotel robe as my wife disposed of our little waitress. I hope she had rewarded her with a big enough tip for her invaluable service. Hi, honey, I shouted as I came out of the bathroom. Can you go get some ice? I have a bottle of champagne we need to chill. The lustful grin I bestowed on her as our eyes met let her know where I intended to pour the champagne as soon as it cooled. I held out the ice bucket to her. Savannah smiled and stretched like a cat, her body as gorgeous as the day we got married. As she stood up and headed barefoot toward the door, I yelled out, Take off your robe! She was a latent exhibitionist, and assuming Savannah would accept the challenge, I wasn't surprised when she threw off her robe, showed me her tongue, and quickly rushed through the room door. The banging, pleading, and crying started about a minute later, and seemed to continue for a while as I quietly gathered all my clothes, and it was almost ten minutes before I heard the door open before the visitor was stopped by the security chain. I'm not ready for room service yet, thank you. I started to close the door when someone struggled to open it. It's the hotel manager, came a desperate voice through the remaining gap. What can I do for you? I asked kindly through the ajar door. Could you let your wife go back to your room, sir? He asked sweetly. Apparently, he didn't like to scandalize the people who had booked the presidential suite. My wife? I can assure you there is no one I would like to share my life with here in this hotel, was my honest answer. A loud cry of pain seemed to come from the hallway at my comment as the manager turned to speak to Savannah. She seemed to have managed to get a towel somewhere, and dried tears adorned her pretty face. Are you saying that's not your wife? The manager tried again. We have an employee who says she saw this woman in your room just 15 minutes ago. I saw a pretty little blonde waitress standing nervously behind the manager, trying desperately not to be dragged into this mess. I addressed the waitress directly. If you recognize this woman, what's her name? While the waitress answered in a timid voice, Mrs. Wayne? A loud not E-E-T came out of Savannah's mouth. I looked at my sobbing, soon to be ex-wife. I'm definitely not Wayne, my last name is Lyons. Maybe this woman is a prostitute who got lost. Now if you'll excuse me, I have a busy day ahead of me. And with those words I closed the door on my wife and marriage. Story 2 As I placed the last bag of my wife's clothes on top of the large pile that occupied my mother-in-law's living room, I thought once again that traveling with newborns is not easy. My father-in-law, Michael, turned to me with a smile. It was unlucky that you had to travel for work so soon after little Gregory was born, but Marie and I are glad they are here. I smiled back at him briefly as my wife cautiously entered the room. It had only been three days since the C-section. Lexi looked tired, but beautiful. The pale smile she turned toward me let me know how much that small movement had taken its toll on her. She gratefully allowed her mother to help her into the padded chair I'd carried only moments ago, and her satisfied sigh let me know that she planned to spend a lot of time there during my absence. 
I looked around at the scene in front of me, my wife and newborn surrounded by loving relatives. Michael, I said somewhat loudly, raising three pairs of curious eyes to meet mine. Do you remember what you said at our wedding when the priest asked, Who is giving this woman in marriage? Michael's eyes flashed for a moment at this pleasant memory as he answered with a smile on his good-natured face. Of course I remember, Jared. It was one of the proudest moments of my life, I said, her mother and I. Marie and Lexi looked at Michael with identical smiles as they joined him in that happy memory. I let the moment linger a little longer before saying it outright. Well, I'd like her back. All three smiles wavered for a moment before Michael and Marie burst into laughter. The complete lack of emotion in my speech and my continued silence slowly stopped their mirth. What are you talking about, Jared? Michael asked, more curiosity than concern on his face. Instead of answering, I simply pulled my iPhone out of my pocket and pressed the play button. Michael's eyes widened as he heard his own voice coming from the small speaker. Mrs. Frizzell said she saw you having dinner with Aaron Stender last night. Lexi's voice came through clearly. It was just dinner, Daddy. Married less than a month and you're dating a guy who almost ruined your life. You're out of your mind. It was just a dinner, Lexi interrupted firmly. Aaron just wanted a chance to say goodbye properly, and with all the wedding madness, we couldn't get together sooner. You better be careful, Michael's voice warned. If Jared finds out, Lexi cut him off. Jared won't find out, and I'm not going to ever see Aaron again so you can relax. I put my phone back in my pocket as the recording came to an end. You're not going to abandon my daughter because of one date that happened almost ten months ago, Michael asked incredulously. His wife and daughter seemed equally shocked as they sat behind him. No, I answered quietly. Only a crazy man would leave his wife for one date with an ex-lover. I made sure to emphasize the X as I slowly shifted my gaze to the small crib with the newborn baby. Two pairs of eyes slowly followed mine, widening with growing horror as the realization of what I was saying finally came. As for my soon-to-be ex-wife, she covered her face with her hands, silent sobs shaking her entire body as the real reason for the sudden move in with her parents came to her attention. I took another look back at the scene, finally letting the sadness I had been holding back overwhelm me. All my hopes and dreams were over before they even began. I turned toward the door. The rest of her belongings would arrive with the movers later today. Please understand that as far as I am concerned, our relationship and marriage is null and void. I have no desire to ever speak to your whore daughter again, and I would appreciate it if you could convince her to simply sign the divorce papers when they arrive. And with those words, I walked out the door to start all over again.